to be a normal day at work, but instead our next guest was forced to hide from a killer on a stabbing rampage in Bondi Junction. Bill owns Hair Royale, a salon on level five, ten stores down where the knifeman was shot dead. He joins us now from Bondi Junction. Bill, thank you for your time, mate. Appreciate it. Um, tell us what you saw. Well, I was just there. I'd come down from the gym at that time, and then I walked in the salon, and I was just—it was a normal day. I was having, saying hello to the girls, walking around, and then I just turned around and I seen like people stampeding, and I'm like, that's a bit odd. What are you like? What's going on there? You know? And I looked, and you know, there's normally children running around Westfield making a lot of noise, so I was a bit. You know, I thought maybe it was them first. And then as I looked closer, I realised they were much grown-up men and women, like actually adults. Um, so then I was like, oh, what's going on? So I went out and I looked down from the salon to level four and I could see a broken glass bottle and some blood trail. So I went to the left, um, maybe two metres, and then I looked and then I could see in Chanel there was a, a body laying there with all blood all over their like, face and torso and I was like well what's going on here you know then I see another lady behind them and then I can see the blood trail and I was like oh my god what's going on so then the girls at that moment have come outside too and they're all looking and I'm like go back go back so then I run to a friend that owns a, um, a glow bar like a juice shop I run there and I'm like hey what's going on um, and he's like I don't know I said I want to help like where do I go and then He's, the lady was, there was a lady there and she was like, oh, what if they've got a bomb? I said, I don't care, I want to help. And then I realised that the women are back at the salon by themselves, so I better go back there for a second. So I quickly went back to the salon and they were all in shock, which I was also. And then I was, I looked towards Boost Juice and I could see them running towards us again. And I'm like, oh, they're running towards us. And then at that moment, I heard the gunshots. And then I was like, go, go, get inside. They've got guns. Because I assumed at that moment that, that people were killing us, were shooting us. So I was like, get in. I quickly closed the front of the shop, locked everyone in, turned off the lights, turned off everything, um, put everyone in the back room. I helped an elderly man that was like, get me in, let me in. I quickly put him in, shuttled them all into the back, closed the door told everyone turn off the lights to pretend or act like we were no longer in the shop and the shop was closed. What um, were those moments like when you, were terrified. when you were waiting um, just for some word? Well, honestly, it was terrifying and horrific. Like, I had already seen the bodies laying on the floor and when I heard the gunshots, I thought, oh, we're next. And the girls that were there and the mother and child they were screaming we're gonna die they're gonna shoot us through the door oh. i'm like it's okay it's okay and i i I'm trying to open the door a little bit and i stood there just trying to see if i could see who's coming like who's coming or what's coming our way um and i just stood there i was very well i couldn't even describe what i, what I felt like it was horrific it was terrifying and having them in the background all curled up in the corner so they put the little boy first then the mother was laying on top of him and everyone wanted to get in the corner first and hide in the corner you know and i felt like i wanted to protect them but at the same time i didn't know what to do so you have and a, you i have tried a, to call security you have a mother lying on on their child to protect them um you've got yeah, other people a, you've got other people hidden um you've you've turned off the lights I, you know, I can't imagine what those those moments were like. Um, thinking, well, we're, we're in a hiding place, but what if we get discovered? I mean, there must have been so much going on. So much going. On. Honestly, it was beyond imagination when you're there and not knowing yeah. what's going on and having them in the background saying they're going to kill us, they're going to shoot us through the front door. We're all dead. And I'm like, we're gonna be okay, like, we're gonna be okay. Just stay hiding, turn off your phones, turn off your phones. Because they got the light on from their phones, they're calling and talking. I said, turn off everything, stop, stop. Like, because mm. I'm thinking that they're walking around, like, killing us. Yeah. Hey, Bill, is, is there any part of you now, now knowing what's, what's happened, what's transpired, and the incredible actions of the, uh, the lone police officer? Is there anything, I mean, you've got a shop in there, is there anything that goes yeah. through your mind now about improving 
security so people just generally feel safer or how do you view that or is it yeah, too early? To be honest, it was we it was crazy because I didn't see any security to be honest with you. I understand now that our security has lost their lives as well. Um, but at that time, we didn't see any security. There was no one. I called their call centers. No one was answering me. Um, and there was no one to help us. We just felt like we were sitting ducks. So when I, we heard that the police officer, Amy, she had killed the guy and saved us, we were like, wow, you know, she's an amazing woman. She's a true hero. And, you know, we, we are lost for words, you know. She, without her, he was coming our way. Um, and who knows what would have happened, because we were unsure which one he was, how many. They said there was three of them. Mm. Um, and even when we were hiding, the police officer came to us. Um, I came out to him and he said, did you see another person run past? I said, no. They said, go back in, lock yourselves back in again. So we all went back into the room again, as, we, as if there was, we thought there was more, um, mm. more people that were out to get us. But I think there was no plan. There was no escape plan. There was no strategy. There was no nothing. Like we. We knew nothing. Okay. Well, that's going to need some work moving forward. Um, Bill? Like, I feel like the security need weapons or something. Like, that was, you know, my partner, I wish she was here today, but she was too terrified. Um, she hasn't slept in two days, which I haven't had much sleep myself. Right. Um, and she, in the morning, she's not doing very well, so... I mean, there's I going to be, the Bill, there's going to be a lot of um, people who aren't doing well these days um, go by, uh, and there's going to be a lot of questions around security as well. But uh, thank you for being with us, and all the very best to Victoria. Thanks for coming on, Matt. Sarah. No worries. Thanks for having my yeah. story. Yeah, absolutely. So me. much pain and so much trauma, Carl. Thank you. Hey there, today fans. Sarah and. <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my God. Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports, and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?